In the previous video, we showed the effects of the tsunami in the city of Soma, which is located in the southern part of the area that was severely affected by the 2011 tsunami. If you haven't seen the video, there is a link in the caption. To make it more interesting, today we are going to go on the other side. The northern area affected by the tsunami near the northern edge of the Iwate prefecture. It's going to be interesting because once again, the wave behaved very differently here and as always, you can look forward to some interesting footage which we will explain and give you the context for. So let's not delay it any longer, sit back and let's watch the new video on the Top Topics channel. While the area between the cities of Ishinomaki and Iwaki is defined by flat coastline and shallow sea, from Onagawa city to Miyako city, the coastline is very rugged, filled with large fjord-like bays and a rapid drop-off of the bottom to the depths. However, from Miyako further north, the character of the coastline begins to change visibly. While there is still a rugged and gigantic coastline and a fairly rapid drop into the deep ocean, the bays are no longer so deep and narrow but instead are very wide and not very far inland. Due to the great depth of the ocean, extending to the very boundaries of the base, the tsunami could move under the surface up to very close to the coast, similar to the southern fjord area. However, this is where the similarity ends. Due to the wide and open mouths of the base, the tsunami after entering the bay was able to form impressive walls of water that overflowed very close to the shore thanks to the sufficient energy that the wave did not lose by rubbing against the bottom. The waves created an unrepeatable and very dangerous spectacle. The first prime example is a wave strike in the Danohata area, near the settlement of Aketo. The waves came approximately 15 minutes after the big shaken from this southeast direction, from an epicenter 60 miles away. In the northern part of the broad bay, the witness was able to get a unique footage from this road on the flyover that is at a sufficient height to not be endangered. The first interesting thing to note is that, unlike the southern areas, there is a fairly large outflow of water. This means only one thing, the wave here did not have the same origin as the wave in the south but was probably generated by a secondary, more northernly fault that triggered the negative tsunami that always precedes the outflow of water. Here we see the rapid return of water and the relatively rapid filling of the bay with water, typical of this type of tsunami. In this case, the main wave is already very close and will come very suddenly and aggressively. Here you can see very clearly the sample wire that was created between two cliffs. This is formed simply because the tsunami has already reached the bay, but at this point it is unable to overcome the barrier quickly, so it builds up behind the cliffs and the ocean level rises faster than the bay level. However, because the bay is open from the south, the main wave arrives very quickly and forms a large aggressive wall of water that spills over just offshore. This is followed by the classic strong current behind the wavefront, which swallows it up. In photos from 2013, we can see that the wave destroyed the original breakwater and subsequently flooded this entire valley. Unfortunately, the breakwaters in this northern area were very insufficient or virtually non-existent. Based on this experience, a two times higher wall was built to withstand the 2011 wave 100%. Interestingly, just a few kilometers to the north in the town of Fudai, which already had massive protection in 2011, making Fudai one of the few towns that remained completely unaffected by the tsunami. The protective wall still stands majestically here, 
and is a silent witness to the terrifying event of 2011. We dedicated a separate episode on our channel to this town and its mayor, Mr. Vamura. You can find the link in the video description. A few kilometers to the north, the situation was reversed. In this giant bay near the area called Noda, there was virtually no protection built and this had its unfortunate consequences. Two witnesses filmed the arrival of the wave here in the south and two witnesses here in the north of the bay. Let's go to the two south ones first. The first cameraman is standing here on the bridge and the second one is standing here on this road, right underneath the bridge. If we look at the bridge, we can see the water leaving the harbor just before the wave came in, even from this shot. The camera underneath the bridge captured quite uniquely the formation of a giant wall of water that was about 30 feet high. The search of the wave is no longer visible from this view, as the cameraman understood the danger he was in and took his feet on his shoulders, which he cannot be blamed for, probably saving his life. Fortunately, the bridge cameraman recorded the search. What's scary is that even though he was high up on the bridge, the wave reached him and splashed him with water. You can see here that the bridge is high above the ocean level, so the wave was huge. In the northern part of the bay, the cameraman was somewhere on this hill. It is impossible to pinpoint the exact location, but a clue is this old breakwater which is visible in the 2011 video. The video only shows the arrival of the second wave, as the coastline is already flooded after the first wave hit. Nevertheless. This example clearly shows an example of an approaching wave that hits the breakwater with enormous force. To illustrate just how crushing the first wave was, we can look at the last video from behind the breakwater where we can see the enormity of the tsunami, which easily spills over the breakwater and floods the entire area behind it. After the experience of 2011, a new breakwater has been built, which as you can see is much bigger than the original one and should protect this whole area from a wave similar to the 2011 one. Interestingly, the original breakwater has been preserved and repaired and so, now the bay area is protected by a double wall. Write in the comments if you would be interested in videos where we would go into more detail about the progress of the construction of protective breakwaters. In individual areas where they're better, or just where the work is progressing slowly, or not at all. That's what this video is all about. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, please consider subscribing, hit that notification bell and we will look forward to seeing you at the next video.